Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for an Australian author's recommendations video. So as I just said, today I'm going to be recommending a variety of different Australian authors. The main reason that I'm doing this today is because if you have seen my announcement video for the Roll of Reads Readathon, you will have seen that one of the prompts for that is to read a book written by an Australian author. So I thought that I would go through and talk to you about some Australian authors. This is not an exhaustive list, so if you want to find other Australian authors, then obviously go ahead and Google that, look on Goodreads, Storygraph, all of the different places where you would find authors. If you know of any that you'd really like to have mentioned, but that I don't mention today, please comment below so that other people who may be watching this for some inspiration, just because they want to read Australian books, but also specifically if they get that prompt, then they can find those as well. So as I said, this is not an exhaustive list. I'm not necessarily going to go through and talk in depth about any of the books that they have written but I will give you an idea of the kind of style of books that they write so that you can get an idea of what might be something that would work for you. So the first author that I have written here in my little notebook is Craig Sylvie. So Craig Sylvie is well known as the, well, within Australia anyway, <laughs> as the author of Jasper Jones and also Honeybee. Unfortunately, I just use iMovie on my Mac, so I have to have them separately. But anyway, um, I think he's written some other books as well, but those are the two that are probably well, most well known and the two that I certainly know him for. I have read Jasper Jones, but I haven't read Honeybee, although it's on the list. So the kinds of books that he writes are quite hard hitting contemporary works. Um, so Jasper Jones is kind of a young adult book that is quite similar to To Kill a Mockingbird but it's from an Australian perspective and like I said it's young adult. Honeybee, I think there's been quite a bit of con controversy around Honeybee. So Honeybee is another hard-hitting book that takes place in Perth in Western Australia and it is about a young man's struggle to find identity because they are trans but Craig Sylvie is not trans so I know that there was a little bit of controversy around him writing a book from that perspective. From what I know he did approach members of the LGBTQIA plus community specifically he approached some trans people and did some research got some perspectives but still not being his lived experience and therefore only being from a few different people's perspectives. There was quite a bit of controversy about that. So obviously take that as you will. If that's something that would be concerned for you, then just be aware of it is basically what I'm saying. But yes, yeah, so Craig Sylvie is a Australian author that you might choose to read. I really, 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 really enjoyed Jasper Jones. Looking forward to reading Honeybee, so highly recommend Jasper Jones at least and Honeybee potentially. The next author I want to talk about is not an author that I've read from, but I have heard really great things about his books. He writes also quite hard-hitting contemporary, and that is Trent Dalton. So the books that he is most well known for are Boy Swallows Universe and All Our Shimmering Skies. He's read, he's written some other books as well, but those are the books that he is most well known for. And like I said, he writes quite hard, quite hard-hitting contemporary novels. Um, very well received within Australia and I think internationally as well. I'm pretty sure that I have seen some booktubers talking about at least one if not both of his books in the past. So definitely a, a author that I personally plan to read something from and yeah I would recommend as an author that you might want to look into. The next author that I'm going to talk about is very well known within Australia and it's probably been sort of given the um accolade of having written kind of a seminal Australian novel. So this person is Tim Winton and the book that I'm specifically talking about is Cloud Street. It is another hard-hitting contemporary, it takes place in Melbourne and kind of put that kind of um, Australian hard-hitting contemporary set within Australia focusing on Australian perspective on the world as sort of front and centre um, and I think is very well known around the world and well acclaimed around the world but specifically within Australia and like I said is very much touted as being a kind of 
icon of its type and time and a seminal Australian book. He's written a variety of other books. I have actually only read one Tim Winton book and that is the book called Breath, which I quite enjoyed, but I definitely need to read Cloud Street at some point. It's definitely on the list, I just haven't quite got there, but it's an Australian modern classic. So if you're looking for something that is iconic within Australia, that is definitely the place to go. The next author that I want to mention is an author that I have read quite a lot of different books from, and she is very well known internationally as well as in Australia, and that is Leanne Moriarty. So Leanne Moriarty is most well known for Big Little Lies, which was made into a television program, I think, on HBO, I think. The television program was set in America and had a mostly American cast. The actual book is set in Sydney, Australia, but it follows very much the same storyline. So Leanne Moriarty writes hard-hitting contemporaries but they always have a little bit of a sort of domestic thriller, domestic mystery sort of bent to their storylines. I really like her as an author. Now another book of hers that is very well known is Nine Perfect Strangers. That one has not been as well received. I personally thought that it was okay. I enjoyed my reading experience of it, but it's definitely not one of her better ones. So potentially if you've not read any Leanne Moriarty, I wouldn't start there. I would start with either Big Little Lies or Truly Madly Guilty. I think they are probably the most well-known and most well-received books of hers, but she's written a variety, like I said, so there's plenty to choose from. The next author that I want to mention is an author that I've read two books from, but again, they are very prolific, and that person is Kate Morton. So Kate Morton writes, they're not quite literary fiction, but they sort of straddle the line between historical fiction and literary fiction. They're usually the sorts of books, well, the two that I've read anyway, are the sorts of books where we have a modern storyline and then a past storyline, and it's the kind of how do these weave together? How do they, how did the past influence the current? Um, and there's always a bit of a mystery to be solved. And it's a, again, a kind of domestic thriller mystery kind of storyline with that time jump and the double perspectives from the two different timelines. I have really loved the two books I read from her. So the first one of those is The Secret Keeper and the second one is The Clockmaker's Daughter. So I'd highly recommend both of those. I thought they were fantastic. But again, she's written quite a number of books. So definitely would recommend that you go and look her up if that's the sort of thing that you're interested in. Next up is Hannah Kent. She's a very well-known author and highly regarded as well. I know that Ellie from Elle Grey Books absolutely loves her books. Um, Helen from Helen's Bookhaven really likes her books. So yeah, I really, really think that I will enjoy them and I'm looking forward to reading them. The next few that I'm going to talk about are Australian Aboriginal authors. So the first of those is Larissa Barrent. So Larissa Barrent is a lawyer and she has written a few different fiction books but she's also written a few different non-fiction books so depending on what your personal preference is you could definitely read either from her. The two that I've read from her so far, one was non-fiction and one was fiction. The fiction was Home and it was a story that followed a kind of generations of a family, starting with a young Aboriginal woman who was taken from her Indigenous family and given to a white family as part of the stolen generation. Now something that I didn't realise as that happened, I knew that that children were taken from their families and given to white families to be their children. But I didn't realise that depending on the colour of their skin, if they were not light enough to pass as white, then they potentially would be put into service and be servants to the families. So anyway, it's a story, a generational story about how the stolen generation has affected Australia, basically, um, and how it affects people who experienced it, how it affects the families of people that experienced it, etc. It was amazing, really hard hitting, highly recommend. I cannot remember, but again, I'll put the <laughs> cover here, what the book the non-fiction book that I read was about, but it was very interesting as well. She's a very good writer. I do have another book of hers called After Story, which I'm super excited to get to, and in fact, we'll be reading at some point during this month in February, so we'll see how we go. The next person I want to talk to about, she is a contemporary 
writer. She's also Australian Aboriginal. I believe she's written a few books, but the two that I've read are Too Much Lip, which is her most well-known book, and Malambimbi. I enjoyed both of those. I definitely prefer Too Much Lip, but I thought they were both well written. Melissa Lukashenko writes books that are contemporary and about Australian Aboriginal people, but there's always an element of sort of magical realism within there as well. Uh, Too Much Lip is LGBTQIA plus as well. Next up is Tara June Winch. Tara June Winch is another Australian Aboriginal author. I have not actually read any full novels of hers. I did read a short story of hers, which for the life of me I can't remember what it was called, but I enjoyed that also. I have another book of hers that I will get to at some point. It's called The Yield, but she's written a few different books. Again, like I said, contemporary, hard-hitting type of adult stories. So if that's the kind of thing that you would like, then I would recommend Tara June Winch. The next author is another Australian Aboriginal author, and that is Anita Heiss. Anita Heiss has written a number of different middle grade, young adult and adult books. I believe is also a lawyer, I think. And yeah, like I said, she's written a number of different books from a range of different genres and a range of different age categories. I enjoyed the middle grade that I read from her. To be honest with you, I haven't I, the other two books I've read of hers, I didn't one I didn't like particularly much. The other one was okay. But if you enjoy contemporary romance, light-hearted contemporary kind of books, then I would recommend her as an author. Yeah, so she's written a variety of books, and like I said, her name is Anita Heiss. <laughs> All right, I have two more Australian Aboriginal authors that I want to mention today. Both of these authors write non-fiction, and one is Stan Grant. I've not actually read any of the books from him, but I know that Paige from Pages with Paige really enjoys his work. And the other is Bruce Pascoe. Bruce Pascoe wrote Dark Emu, which is is quite a well-known book within Australia. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I feel like it's not unknown anyway, if that makes sense. I've actually only read half this book. I kept intending to go back to it and just haven't yet, but it is a kind of alternative history of Australian Aboriginal people and particularly around colonisation or invasion. So yeah, definitely recommend both of those authors if you are interested in history, particularly Australian history. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is certainly not an exhaustive list of Australian Aboriginal authors. So if you want to read books by Australian Aboriginal authors, then I would highly recommend you search, like I said, Google, Goodreads, Storygraph, because this is not an exhaustive list. This is, for the most part, with the exception, like I said, of Stan Grant, these are authors that I have had something to do with reading at least one of their books or a short story. But yeah, I definitely would recommend looking that up. Sorry, that is a total lie. I have one more Australian Aboriginal author that I want to talk about. I've only read one of their books, but I loved it, and that is Amberlynn Quay Molina. So the book that I read of theirs is um, Ashala Wolf, The Disappearance of Ashala Wolf. Um, it is a dystopian young adult, and I thought it was fantastic. I have the rest of the series. I haven't got to them yet. I will at some point, but anyway, I know that Amberlynn Quaymelina also wrote a book with her brother, I think, called, I'll put it on the screen, Something Tell a Crow, and I've heard great things about that one. I've heard that it's really, really fantastic. I know that at least one non-Australian <laughs> or someone not living in Australia has read it. Um, I know that Brianna from Four Paws in a Book read this one, and I'm not sure how much she liked it, but I know she read it. So I know that it's known outside of Australia, but yeah, I'd highly recommend Amberlynn Quaymelina as well. Okay, the next two authors that I would like to recommend, I have read one book from each of them, but I've heard fantastic things about all of their books. They are both crime mystery thriller writers. The first one is Kyle Perry. Kyle Perry is actually Tasmanian, which is where I live. The Bluffs is set in, Austra in Tasmania. Not sure about The Deep, but I think it might be as well. The Bluffs was a really fantastic, yeah, like I said, mystery. Very kind of convoluted, lots of stuff going on, but I thought it was really well written. And then the other person is Jane Harper. So Jane Harper wrote The Dry, which I think is probably her most well-known book. She's written a variety of other books, including The Survivors. The Dry was turned into a movie featuring Eric Banner. I've actually read and seen 
to try so I'd highly recommend both the book and the adaptation thought they were fantastic really really well written really solidly written um, murder mysteries I've heard great things about some of her other works so I would highly recommend both of those authors next up we have Garth Nix Garth Nix wrote the Sabriel what is now a six book series when I read it it was a trilogy and I've only read the first three so I really need to fix that but anyway so yes Garth Nix wrote the Sabriel books he also wrote a variety of other books he's written Angel Mage he wrote the left-handed booksellers of London I think it's called he wrote the keys to the kingdom series as well which is a middle grade series he's a fantasy author I personally think he's fantastic like I said I've read Sabriel, Lyriel and Borson and I've also read all of the keys to the kingdom I really really enjoyed all those books that I have read I really would like to read some more of his works but I haven't got there yet but I highly recommend the books that I've read and I think he's a great fantasy author Next up we have Lynette Noni. I've not read Lynette Noni but I know that she has become incredibly popular thanks I think in part to the fact that The Prison Healer was featured in Fairy Loot I think. So that is the first in a new series by her. I've heard fantastic things about it. I've heard that it's really really well written. Lots of people love it. It was quite a few different people's favourite book of the year last year. So if that means anything to you I would recommend. So that is probably her most well-known series and certainly the ones internationally well-known but it was not her debut which is something I've heard said um, by non-Australians but it's not her that was not her debut she's written other books. Another series written by her was well, the first one is Akane and I know Jenna from Just a Little Bit Random absolutely loves the Akane series. I did put Akane on a TBR but didn't get to it but I definitely want to read some from something from Lynette Noni so at some point I will read some but yeah if that sounds like something that you would be interested in so like I said it's fantasy mostly young adult but yeah fantasy author highly recommend. The final author that I'd like to mention today is Marcus Zusak. So Marcus Zusak is the author of The Book Thief which I think is a very well known particular here on booktube. It is a hard-hitting historical fiction focused around Germany in the Second World War. It is really good. I really, really enjoyed it. He's written an, a few other books. I've only read The Book Thief, um, but I definitely want to read some other of his books. I have Bridge of Clay, so I'll be getting to that at some point. But yeah, Marcus Uzak is also an Australian author. So if The Book Thief is a book that you have been looking at reading at some point, then if you're doing my game, and you get the Australian author prompt then The Book Thief would be a good place to go. Like I said really well written, really interesting historical fiction with a little tiny bit of fantastical element thrown in. So as I've said this is not an exhaustive list of Australian authors, there are a lot out there. If any of these did not appeal or have you read works from all of these people then I'd highly recommend that you search Google, search Goodreads, search Storygraph, search all the different places that you go to search for books but that's just some recommendations that I would like to give you for like I said if you're looking to branch out and read Australian authors or if you are doing my Roll of Reads readathon and you happen to get Australian author as a prompt then this is a list of authors that you could look up to fulfill that prompt. But yes that's it from me today. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other authors that you'd like to add to this list, if you have any authors that you think that I was very remiss in leaving off. Let me know in the comments below also if you are going in my, taking part in my readathon, I would love to know that as well. If you would like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then leave me a pen or pencil emoji because we're talking about authors and writers. All of my social media details are listed in the description below so if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching today, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.